What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Game Dev Unchained, the number one game development podcast about game development and the lifestyle thereof. Brandon Fam, and back at it again once a month with a roundtable news episode where game devs sit around the campfire, the virtual campfire, of course, and talk about the latest and recent game news related to game devs. With my special second unofficial host, you got to earn that title, Ray. Ray Graham, how you doing, Ray? Hey, what's happening? How you doing? All right, uh, gave you the wrong background there, so no one can see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ray, uh, as kind of tradition, uh, just want to see how you're doing, man. Another month of pandemic. I know people are tired of hearing me telling them how terrible things are but uh how are things i mean the light is at the end of the tunnel right yeah hearing, two vaccines in the in the yeah in the yeah we're, we're hearing we're hearing about vaccines and stuff so maybe by by may or june of next year things might be back to normal hopefully maybe who knows but yeah it sucks it sucks also like you know we're coming up on the holidays and and i'm choosing to stay away from my family for the for the holiday so that that also oh, shit. R- really sucks yeah so uh yeah but you know i'm gonna i'm gonna take some time off still and try to relax but yeah you know yeah we're uh we're definitely on this side uh, making some hard decisions ourselves um we made a judgment call uh took a look around made some judging and <laughs> said that you people <laughs> aren't taking this seriously enough we can't do this oh, wow. i i even asked like hey if you guys want to plan ahead and do thanksgiving together you just you know two weeks let's get tested get quarantined you know uh treat it seriously and then two weeks later we get tested again and it's better than nothing and We'll take the risk and we'll hang out, but none of them fall fall through. So <laughs> we're doing immediate families only. Uh, none, of the, none of them wanted to, to subject themselves to some testing. I guess they didn't like us. They didn't like us enough. I mean, we did uh, we did do like a little Big Bear cabin trip a, a few weeks ago, and we all got tested. I got tested. I shoved that thing up in my nose. Um, it was. I I guess I guess I had a I wouldn't say a gag reflex because it's up my nose, but I have like the sneezing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can imagine. Yeah, I didn't know that about myself <laughs> where I just have this uncontrollable sneezing <laughs> because I was like, uh, I poked it up because it, you have to do a two nose, right? And I, I had to do like a drive through. I had to do it myself at first and I heard those are not as accurate, but I, I really shoved it up there, okay? And after the instruction, I put it up in my right nose you know, just slowly approaching up there and trying to touch my brain with it. And I, I sneeze immediately. And then of course, you know, because of my reaction, the thing fell out of my nose. And then, you know, I didn't get it up there high enough. So I stuck it back in and twisted. <laughs> Sneezed again. And then I put it on the other one. And it was uncontrollable sneeze. I don't know how people do it with Nurses helping them because they'll be sneezing all over the place. I mean, we don't need to hear about this. <laughs> I'm just telling the people out there that testing, I got a free. Uh, yeah. I, I went to uh, like a, a, a CVS, got it for free. Uh, no, no hassle whatsoever. They just needed the name and they just, I guess for Californians, they just send it to the government and they pay for it. I did pay a cent. So testing is very available now versus months ago. And I I do feel like it's kind of dumb that families can't get their shit together to be (laughs) quarantine buddies. You know what I mean? Like really be, pick a group and and stick with it. I mean, it's just, it's just better to just not even bother. You know what I mean? Like, like, like I don't need to be around people that much where I'm going to like let everybody test and quarantine for two weeks. And then I, and then they have to quarantine for two weeks. And I, I don't even know if they didn't quarantine or not. I have no yeah, idea. Yeah. And like, nah, man, I, I can't, I can't. Take well, that. I guess that's the difference. I mean, we, we love our family, Ray, enough to like <laughs> want to hang with them after eight months. Yeah, uh, okay. I would and say also, that cabin trip was a relief. You know, for me, yeah. for me, my family, I got to get on a plane. Yeah. yeah, so you, I'm not getting on. No. Oh uh, yeah, you're going too far. Yeah, we're we're like 15 minutes away, so. Yeah, yeah. We're not so bad. Anyways, um yeah, well glad. Well, it's sad to hear that, but yeah, in California it has been jumping 
like pretty crazy and mm -hmm. uh it's better uh to just hold out a little longer if you're already holding out and that's kind of like my thinking process especially in your especially in your neck of the woods has been going kind of crazy orange county is kind of dumb yeah, yeah, yeah definitely well bay area is pretty bad too you guys in a yeah, red yeah. i saw some i saw some map that it was like la orange county area was just bananas compared it's basically to a big swath of color from down here to up there really all yeah. california <laughs> seems to i think as soon as the vaccine news came out people were just full abandonment not caring <laughs> um which is never good but uh anyways uh this is the roundtable news episode uh as always our opinion reflects our own and uh let's get right to it man uh, public announcement man. i uh I actually want to ask you about this because we do have a lot of game devs out there. Obviously, we only mentioned this once in a while. You're over there at Unity. I saw like a special initiative actually with you guys oh, with yeah. 80,000 devs. Like, can you explain that a bit? Because even I was interested because you guys are going through programming as well, right? Being a programmer yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like, I wouldn't even, I can't really do it that much justice, right? But on okay, the, I'll post some on the, facts up here to on the blog. On the blog, though, like, it's basically what they're announcing are these career pathways. Uh, so the folks that want to get like kind of want to go down the path of like saying being a unity programmer, right. Um, mm -hmm. can take a, a course that's pretty long and that course will prepare them to become uh, certified and, nice. uh, and it's going to be paid for by the social impact unity, social impact, um, org org and, and it's free and, you know, you can just start, you know, there's links to, to the learning material. Um, there's one called Unity Essentials, which is just one or two weeks for like real basic Unity stuff. And then there's one uh, junior programmer, uh, which is uh, three to four months of 60 hours of guided learning. Right. Nice. Um, so and then that will kind of set you up so that you can also become a certified Unity developer. And this um, is available to the first 80, first, first, yeah, well, first yeah, come, first serve? Well, yeah. yeah, it says like 80, it says that the goal is they want to reach 80,000 people, but I don't think there is a limit. Okay. Right. Um, at least not from what I can see, uh, but it's just like, yeah, you just click on the link, junior programmer link, and it, it's in the blog there. Um, mm -hmm. And you go straight there. You it's know? really so, cool. Yeah. It's, it sounds yeah. like a, it's a really cool thing. You know, like I'm all about um, education and getting more uh, educational material out there. One of the reasons why I work at Unity is because I think Unity is a very easy way of getting into game dev and learning game dev, right? Um, it's a yeah, it's uh, an awesome initiative. I saw that, and I saw them using the D word diversity as part of the initiative. So it's definitely yeah. a, a great opportunity for anybody who who wants to learn something while the pandemic. Like even my my kid is ten. Uh, I just threw threw it at him for the first time today because he's really getting into. I'm at that place where I'm buying copies of two games now for myself and him <laughs> to play mm -hmm. together. And I threw it at him. I was like, you want to start learning games? I uh, was like, yeah, he was super interested. So, and this kind of popped in today. So I was like, yeah, it'd be actually a yeah. pretty cool way to get him started and skip you know, like, yeah. you know, college tuition. Yeah. I know. And it's, and it's all shit. about, it's just all about removing or lowering the barrier to entry. You know what I mean? Wow. And really, kind of opening the door for people to um, to get into game. Like it's it's has not been any easier than it is these days. Yeah, and I think so, it's fantastic. Yeah, and so folks just need to, and it's free. Folks it's free. Get, it's awesome. With it, yeah. yeah. Well, I want to, on behalf of the game dev community, I think it's a great opportunity. Again, we're not, not at least this episode, we're sponsored by Unity. We've been sponsored by <laughs> Unity before. But, uh, you know, I'm a big, big fan of free education. So uh, go out there, go seek it out, guys. I'll, I'll drop it on this week's episode's link so you can follow up. Uh, I, be, I think it's already opened, right? Uh Yeah. This is day links, one, right? The links, links are active. You can, you can click on them. Perfect. Right awesome. Cool. Uh, with that being cast aside, I, I think we kind of have to address the elephant in the room as well, which is the big PS5. Although uh, neither of us really 
tried getting one. Uh, I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, have you heard any grave reviews? Like uh, your general. Uh, let me. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm recording it. Any general consensus? Uh, is the next gen or now this gen meeting up to the expectations? Well, I mean, um, I try to get one, but you know, Walmart, Walmart did not allow me Rejected to get one. Yeah. yeah, they 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 told me to go fly kite. But no, but I, I see people playing uh, Spider Man and. Um, Demon and Souls. Astros play room and Demon Souls. That's pretty much what I'm seeing, and it's looking it's looking nice. Uh, you know, you see the reviews of Spider Man's uh, real time ray tracing uh, compared to having it on versus having it off. Um, I personally think turning it off and getting 60 frames a second is uh, a worthy trade off. But but even with it on, it, it's it's a good looking game. You know, yeah. and it's looking pretty good on PS5. So it's. Right now, it's looking great. It's just there's just not a whole lot of titles. Like I think, yeah, I think having Spider Man and Demon Souls is going to help straight out the gate. Uh, Microsoft doesn't really have something that's comparable, um, but but it's looking good. Cool, not bad. Yeah, I, I think uh, I skipped the PS4 console version. Uh, so there's a lot of PS4 games that I'm yeah. looking towards playing on on this gen on PS5. Uh, when I, I do get it, probably next year. I'm not in a rush. I don't know how you skip the PS4. I don't even under that does not compute. Uh, like I got two all. kids to feed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got a mortgage. <laughs> how, how's computing now? Uh, I don't know. So, I bought, still doesn't compute. Still doesn't compute. <laughs> I've always been PC first, and I felt like uh, aside from the Sony exclusive, which are a lot. Let's, there's a lot of Sony there's a lot of good ones for sure. Good games. Yeah. Last of Us, you know yeah. the uh, even this Spider recent Man. year there was a lot of one a good ones. Spider Man's my game of the year. You know? Yeah, so I'm looking forward to trying all that out. So I'm not yeah. I'm not in rush for any new PS5 games, but uh, it looks like I won't get my hands on one until until after the year. So it's mm -hmm. okay. I mean, at least Horizon Zero Dawn went on to PC, and I I, you know, I bought that. I just haven't played it yet. Uh, aside from that, though, um, yeah, I've been hearing good reviews. I've been hearing uh, the machine's a lot quieter. I, I've been hearing uh, the controller uh, has surprisingly really cool features with the rumble feedback, with some mm -hmm. resistance in the trigger, uh, which they don't really uh, brag about. But it's been really crazy how uh, basically the game can control how the trigger plays a factor in part of the game design where it actually, if even if you're like as strong as I am, right. All right. Not to, not to brag, but I bench a lot. Right. But like, like trigger is so hard that you can't even push it down if the, the game doesn't allow you to. So there's some kind of a, some new type of suspension that they got on there that they never really talk about, which is a nice, cool surprise. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think uh, at least my friends who've been playing with it over the last couple of days have been pretty happy with it. Uh, no complaint. Uh, really actually flipped my expectations. I mean, if you guys go back roundtable news since the beginning of the year, I was really doubting that it'll do as well as it did. Uh, I was completely uh, surprised how... The pandemic didn't really slow people down shopping, which makes me even. Oh, the pandemic. More about. I think the pandemic slowed down the availability of the console. <laughs> sure. The, the, the fact that you can't get one is, I think, the pandemic has. Didn't think that was going to be the problem. I thought it was going to be yeah. people buying it. Yeah, I thought it was going to no. be a lot worse. People are tired. People need to escape, right? You know, and. and yeah. uh, well, I guess the economy is all right uh, for people to go out there and just drop uh, half half a thousand dollars on consoles. I think I think the ones the ones that would buy a console probably we'll had jobs it. in the first place that oh. can weather the pandemic. You see that so gamers are well off, is what you're saying. Jeez, you know, I'm saying I'm what... saying I'm saying the ones that would be first day in line by a console are well off. We'll always find the money. Should, should yeah. Have, yeah. yeah, nerds always have the money. <laughs> for sure uh so speaking yeah. of which I, I we have to kind of 
hark back to uh to what's up with fortnite and you know the iphone and iandroid wars um although there's not really an update with apple i think apple and epic really hates each other at this point and they're not backing down so that story is still they hate each other but android uh let me pull this up real quick android 12 google just announced said that it's going to provide options for third-party app stores, uh, which uh, I'm pulling up on my screen so that I am backing up my claim. But they are planning for this uh, to happen sometime uh, very soon, like or even in the beginning of the next year and stuff, the, pretty much the next Android update. This, uh, well, that's not what I'm reading, right? Like You're not other reading features, that? yeah, the other features will make it even easier for people to use other apps right. on their devices. You still gotta pay while, Google a fee while while being careful not to compromise the safety measures Android has in place. So, mm-hmm. I think it's still, I think it's like uh, an availability that's always been available for Android, yeah. but they're just making it more a little bit more pronounced. Um, I think it's the right stance. I, uh, they're not as combative as it seems like Apple is with Epic Games or third-party apps, basically, which, you know, Google has always been the anti-Apple store. Yeah. Well, it should be. That's how they position themselves. It's like everybody that doesn't have an Apple is using our, our OS. Read- if you read further to those, says Google isn't, by contrast, relaxing its grip on the in-app payments from Play Store apps. Right. The company says that all developers selling digital goods in their apps are required to use Google Play's billing system. As it should. I think there's... Okay. That's that's one of the things that your boy um, didn't want to do, right? So that's, that's, one of the, that's one of the things he's like, well, I, I want to use my own payment system, right? Because you want to... Honestly, by this time, uh, this kind of leads into another thing that I just saw too. Uh, what was it? Let me pull that up. There's a new tech that they're introducing. And I mean, Fortnite had a great run, right? And they're still selling millions and they're... <laughs> a great run. <laughs> <laughs> Every game has its era, right? I do feel like Fortnite... Uh, like I see it with my own child, right? Him and his friends are super... That's their first major game, right? They were playing, especially through this pandemic. They play yeah. the shit out of it. Uh, but now they are finally getting bored of it and discovering other games like Rocket League, which is a smart move sure. by Epic for buying it, right? Yeah. Uh, pff, you know, all the other free games, Valorant. They're not playing, they're not yeah. Playing, uh, Roblox. <laughs> he started Roblox. He still plays it once in a while, but he's starting to mature, which, which I see uh, a great... Uh, evolution of gamers right they start with the small games and i'm seeing him through my own child that he's advancing to more complicated now he's playing valorant and overwatch right he started with Mm -hmm. fortnite very simple so that's within the span of the last four or five months so uh uh, I do see that transition from people playing Fortnite all the time to playing other games. I'm not saying Fortnite's going anywhere anytime soon, mm-hmm. but you know they're doing as best as they can to kind of keep the interest going. I see this cool tech. It's kind of like the Apple front yard of their uh, AI, not AI driven, but like um, a, a facial recognition driven from the player, which is kind of creepy, but they're using this type of tech uh for an upcoming i think they just bought it let me read this right newly acquired hypersense yeah so epic just bought hypersense that specializes in expressive digital avatars like honestly is it really crazy and i want to kind of bring this up and it's not something i've read it's speculation guys wouldn't epic be the perfect game company to come out with a gamer focused phone you don't think like a little bit elevated triple a driven like they're kind of bullying everyone else you still think they're gonna just play by everybody's rules with all this i mean razor stuff razor throwing trying, around razor trying to make a phone yeah but it's razor they make everything <laughs> And they're very good at making random things. Let's not yeah. get that wrong. But like, there is a little bit more weight when a company like Epic comes me, out Epic with is, the phone. Has more weight 
for a phone than Razer, whose business it is to make hardware? Honestly, yeah, <laughs> maybe. But my kid doesn't know what a Razer is. But if my kid, like even my kid knew about the Epic versus Apple thing, I didn't say anything to him. And, you know, God knows he doesn't watch my show. So he's getting that from somewhere. There is something to yeah. it. Um, uh, it's Maybe it's nothing. But I don't know. I feel like all this stuff that they've been buying up so much lately has to be leading to something uh, hardware focused. Uh, I mean, it's not impossible because Valve kind of did that out of left field and they're finding success <laughs> with their Vive stuff, right? Uh, Epic, I feel like, doesn't have as, as, as much money, but they have a store, right? I feel like they're obviously always looking ahead of what's the next big thing with all this Fortnite money to invest forward and knowing that Fortnite eventually will, you know, hit it, hit it end and can't be their main part of the business. So they have to invest into hardware knowing full well that, uh, they don't have a hundred percent control of their distribution. Right. I don't know. I feel like everything that they're doing kind of is leading to that. I like, we, we kind of speculated, well, let's just, <laughs> you speculated by this time that Fortnite and Apple would be making up and kissing. I don't see that happening. I see that they are forever enemies. I, oh, I did say, did I say by December? I said, I think I said you said it by December. You still yeah, feel that way though? By by Christmas time? Uh, I mean, there's two more weeks, a couple more weeks. For <laughs> <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's not that much, man. Thanksgiving, they're not going to change their mind over yeah. some turkey. Yeah, I, yeah I feel like... I feel honestly for, for, for someone like Epic to kind of burn that bridge so publicly with the number mm -hmm. one phone maker in the United States, at least that they're not going to grovel. They, they really meant to burn that bridge forever and, and are thinking of different ways to, to capitalize. I mean, they have the funds, right? And uh, I wouldn't be so opposed to a gamer focused phone at this point. You don't think so? Oh my god! So no. you're not a mobile gamer, right? Um, I well, I do play some games on my mobile phone. And who makes the fastest GPU and CPU in Apple. mobile phones today? Right? And the games run great. Yeah. So like, why why do I need an, yet another phone for somebody who has never made a phone before ever? Right. It is a tough business. How many people have failed? Microsoft yeah. have failed recently. <laughs> A few years back, yep. uh, Google barely made it. Like even when we, when I thought their Pixel phones were pretty successful, yeah. it wasn't until recently where they're like finally gained some real grounds. Um, yeah. And then there's a lot of Chinese companies that kind of take the technology and make their own version. <laughs> well, they, well, they uh, like, they uh, what is it? Ja, ja -mi, ja -mi makes yeah, just kind of overlap. Good Apple. phones. Good yeah, phones. really yeah. good phones. Yeah. yeah, the Asian companies are, are kind of killing it with the phones. So. Well, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it on Epic. Uh, I just want to provide an update. You know, not much there, but the Android update, even that is a, like a slow celebration, really, but not really. Like, I don't think I they like know. that deal either. Yeah, I I can't think that they are cool with both companies' response and really thought differently. That's why I kind of feel like if not a gamer phone, they're they're backing up something for distribution of their future games because you know Fortnite's huge and Rocket League would be awesome. I think on the phone if they can make that happen. Yeah, it's still still relevant. Um. Let's move on to the next topic. So this is actually, you know, kind of uh, <laughs> kind of harking back to your 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 heyday uh, <laughs> working at 2K. So this is an old topic, sorta, but this is a continuous of sports games, and I've always felt like sport games like NBA 2K and Madden. If for some reason they have a bad year, they always have that trump card of making it free to play, which will completely kill it uh i think um they're just holding that back is that what they're doing in your opinion with all these in-game ads that you can't skip 
Oh, I feel like they're. Pre- <laughs> you think that's preparing for that shit? Because that's crazy, right? I mean, I can't understand. Well, FIFA doesn't even already, do this. It's already kind of. It's not free to play because you have to pay the sixty initial or seventy yeah. dollars or whatever, right? But once you play the game, like you might the buy team mode and also the 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 park the park mode, are for all person all intents and purposes, they're 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 free to play microtransaction games at that point. And that's where all the money is made. That's where people spend all of their time playing the park and, and my team. And and it is a free to play game at this point. And then the thing about um, unskippable ads, um, yeah, I, I was hearing I was hearing it was actually a mistake. It was actually like a bug or something that was making that was making the ads play more more frequently than they than they wished than they wished it to. Uh, but still, yeah, like I, I think having ads in your like real ads of your game is starting to go down that that slippery slope. But they've had ads in the game for a long time now. Already. You know, honestly, if it was free to play, I don't mind it. Like it yeah. makes it feel like you're watching a uh, game. It looks like you're watching the game right now. Anyways, it looks pretty good. Right. Yeah. Um, I think it's just the initial seventy dollars that bothers people. Where yeah, uh, you try to melt more money out of me after you already got the seventy dollars. So yeah, I f- honestly, I, I you know they're making good money, obviously, so they're gonna keep doing that. But <laughs> I think they're gonna make a lot more money if they make it free to play. How many more players will they have? And I think you don't I think, think so? every. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think everybody that's going to play NBA has bought NBA. You know what I mean? And they buy it every year, and they're and they're there, and then they flood my park, and they drop all of their money into my park. Like it just, it's. I don't know if making it free to play would would, would expand the base much more than I'm that. curious but there, because but there the is Madden's... you know but you know there is a 2K online there is an NBA is 2K there? online that but it's it's uh it's pretty popular in China. Um, uh-huh. So they do have a testing model. Yeah. So I don't know if it's available. I don't think it's available in the States, but it's definitely big in in Asia. I know Call of Duty did that too. There's a Call of Duty online only available in China. And it was crazy um, Mm -hmm. when we saw it internally. Like they had dragons and shit. And it looked pretty cool. It was well made. And it's only available in China um in that market yeah so i these companies are always kind of doing this thing i'm surprised there hasn't been one of these companies doing over here globally like yet like madden fifa uh you know they they have examples of these models working Mm -hmm. and i feel like sport games like rock league has been the only recent one where i felt was closest that went free to play and I, I think it's doing really well for them. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean they, yeah, they, I, like I said, they have the um, they have the bits in there, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, my team is a free to play game. Like, it is, you know, has booster packs, has the whole nine. It's like ultimate team in um, in uh, FIFA or Madden, right? Yeah. And and my park, there's a lot of free to play elements. In, in that as well with they have their own currency vc currency right so it, it's as far as i'm concerned the only thing it's it is free to play but you just have to pay 60 dollars for it right like it's like once you buy it yeah I, I know i know <laughs> but, but once you buy it it is a free-to-play game like in, sure. in how it's designed right yeah yeah I'm, I'm thinking they're just waiting for a flop to kind of turn that key but um this kind of goes back to our first topic with you know the new system coming out right um i was telling a friend earlier today actually where i was uh just looking at my hard drive and i was really considering uh, deleting warzone because that shit was 200 gigs off my hard disk <laughs> and uh, the next gen versions uh, have both a digital and hard disk version and i think the old school um smarter ones i uh, got the hard disk uh the, the the actual blu-ray version uh and a lot of people went for the digital version only yeah. to find out that uh these games are so huge that only three games can really fit at one time <laughs> even with a terabyte but and if, i think but it's one if, of the biggest problems uh happening for this you, gen yeah but even if you buy a disc version you still like just like on ps4 you still gotta install, install. It. 
you still install it, right? So, so I don't know if if what version you buy matters because it's still going to take up a whole bunch of space on your hard drive. And Lee, I'm finding the same thing is true with PC games, right? Like oh, yeah, newer, PC. The, the my, my newer, newer PC right games now. are are approaching 80, 80 to hundred gigs, right? Um, base without all the DLC and all the nonsense that you have to download on top of that, right? Um, right. Warzone. I almost installed Warzone because I wanted to check it out, and it was mm-hmm. like eighty gigabyte download. I was like, nope. I was like, eighty gigabyte, and the, dude, yeah. at one point it was two hundred gigs best. for me, dude, just with yeah. all the install. Packages. I mean, the, the the initial download was eighty, and I'm just like, nope, nope, it's not that important. But that's uh, that's what I mean, man. Yeah. I I wanted to open this topic up a bit because uh, it's becoming, I feel, one of the biggest topics uh, for both gamers and game developers. I think game developers work better with limitations, uh, <laughs> and now we're we're saying one terabyte, go at it, guys. And I don't think that is the smartest thing to do uh, because it, yeah. as a gamer, I hate it. I don't like how my hard drive is only taken up by one game, and I have to make decisions, and the decision is not instantaneous. I have to wait for like hours. To delete and install a new game and yeah. uh and i think it deters me from trying other big games well, or most, little games yeah well most people um well not most but i'm saying you can't actually get external storage right and on the new console at least on xbox right it allows you to uh swap use, it out. It, use it use it as a swap right where where it'll back up the game to that and then the new game that you want to play will be in will be on the on the fast ssd right Mm -hmm. so that you can uh you can play there and so you have this big you have a bigger external drive just for the storage of your games externally right uh and then and then uh, (laughs) i don't feel like it's solving the problem (laughs) and then also the xbox has the external external uh slot for for the fast memory so you could yeah. buy a, an expansion card and then on the ps5 they have the uh the, another nvme uh slot for your yeah. ss for fast yeah. another ssd right so so they're they you know like you could get more storage it's just gonna it's gonna cost you you know but is that between 100 to 300 dollars to get more storage right <laughs> You know, my camera's dying um, on me again. They can't give you two terabytes of super, super fast um, NVMe SSD, right? Because that's about that's a three hundred to four hundred dollar piece of hardware just by itself. Is that the step in the right direction, though? Like, do you? F- There's obviously a limitation to that. If you're asking someone to only the hardcore will go out to buy extra storage, but most people will yeah. kind of bite the bullet and wait around or make a decision not to yeah, install certain not, games. If you're not the one to to uh, you to uh, have external storage and all that, like I'm also going to argue that you're not the one to have a whole bunch of games. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Like if you're not the hardcore, if you're not the hardcore, you're not going to buy every game that's out. Well, I think I, I think it definitely deters people from trying new games or and then even buying new games, right? Yeah. I think it, it's going to hurt us. I mean, it's hurting me now <laughs> as a gamer. <laughs> like I'm making an executive decision now. It's like, do I want to keep Warzone? Do I see myself playing this uh, you know next month do i want to sit there and reinstall that you know i'm making a decision of playing this forever or not but if you're talking on the pc you have way more options on the pc for for external and more storage that it's not even a, it's not really an issue on pc like, really. it's an issue bro yeah. i have i have i do have four different you know ssds yeah right um and I have one terabyte dedicated to just games and fucking well, yeah, one fourth of it is taken up by one game. And I don't like that. <laughs> it's like, what am I installing here? <laughs> I, have a, I have a three terabyte, um, I have a three terabyte, like uh, for games, physical, physical drive that I have yeah. all my games on. And I finally upgraded to an NVMe and I got a two terabyte NVMe. Uh, where I have all the games on there, or at least have the games that are the newer ones that I'm playing right now on installed on there. Um, and it's like, you know, like I've probably eaten a gigabyte, I'm sorry, 
almost ter- uh, almost a terabyte of it's gone already with like three three or four or five games and stuff. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, but still, you know, like like I have enough storage in the machine where I can I can do the juggle if I need to. Right, I still have a lot of free space. Um, yeah, but that- and and I have two more NVMe slots that are available to put stuff into. Right, so I can even. Take it up the, a couple more. The dollars. hardcore is the hardcore. <laughs> if we're trying to expand this yeah. industry, you know, at least the you know the the the, the big games, right? People wanting to yeah. play the big games, and a lot of them, right? It's yeah. Although you know, in a year there are three or four big games, but there's many more big games and many more big games that are good that people should play. Yeah. But I, I feel like this hard drive thing is becoming such an issue. Yeah. Where it's to, like it's keeping people from playing games or playing a game long enough to get to the good part, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I think I think tech will also solve some of this problem. Um, well, one thing like one thing I wanted to say before I say that is Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven is probably going to be an huge. enormous as game, right? Yeah. Um, but 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 um, tech I think is solving this problem, right? Like are on they? PS, on PS, is there some major compression? On PS5, there is there is a um, talk of like there is compression, right? That mm-hmm. that get so the files can get decompressed on the fly and stored into memory. Cool. Um, Rad Rad Game Tools released you know um, an article about about their compression scheme, right? So they have a they have a compression scheme for textures, which is one of the big things that take up a lot of space on disk, uh, so that they get like you know so you do the DXT compression of the textures, but then you can also compress it some more. Uh, block block of block aware compression right mm-hmm. um, and then and then the hardware itself uh, can actually or there's software on the hardware itself that can actually decode that compression and and reestablish the texture through through decompression right so like there's there's tech that I'm sure in compression algorithms and things that people are working on to to shrink the size of what is on your actual disk mm-hmm. uh, and then it's the same size thing when it's in memory and running in your game. Uh, but when it's on the disc, it's compressed. And there's a lot of talk of like the new, like with the new NVIDIA graphics cards and with the new AMD graphics cards, if you have PCIe 3.0 and the NVMe drive and the right CPU uh, and, the, and uh, you use like Microsoft uh, direct storage and things can store straight from your SSD straight into graphics memory. So the CPU doesn't have to interfere with that. And that API also has built in, but also do some compression or decompression of, um, of data through that API, right? So this gym will be so, solved then, this this issue? I mean, I'm I did say, see I'm some- not saying, I'm not saying it's gonna solve it, but I'm saying that, that, that uh, tech can help uh, at least reduce the, the footprint of these things, right? Yeah. Um, so we shall see how that turns out. It is a topic that I'm trying to find a guest to kind of dedicate an episode to because it has been yeah. one of those uh, hidden ones yeah. <laughs> that's been creeping up uh, in everybody's personal experience, but no one's really dedicating yeah, I mean, we've been any, any research on it. Yeah, yeah, we've been compressing game data for a long time, right? And it's, it was before it was like, oh, how's this going to fit on the disc, right? Oh my god, we have to. We have yeah, to I know. I know think we were disc, right? always really yeah. good on that, but I yeah. think I think the last gen to this gen, it's, it's been largely it. unchecked. <laughs> it's, it still has to fit on the disc, but it just turns out the discs are very large. Well, to right? me, <laughs> I think to me, it happened right when game developers figured that day one launch can be launched with an empty disc <laughs> with a day one patch. I think that was when the Pandora's box was opened and we were <laughs> we were left unchecked for a long time. It felt like a long period where a lot of yeah. that bullshit was happening and well, I mean, people once, were yeah, checking once you get, crazy texture yeah. sizes and shit. Well, once you do the patch, right, then yeah. you're not really beholden to the size of the actual physical media anymore. Yeah. Right. So you could be a little bit larger. Right. But if you know, but everybody hates, (laughs) but yeah, but everybody hates it when you get a patch and it's like download another 50 gigs. Right. Like nobody wants to do that. I think this is a win for game devs to not be restricted, but a complete loss to gamers. (laughs) 
it's just insane. Um, I don't know if it's a loss of gamers if they're getting bro. If bigger, I have one terabyte textures, and I only can have three games fidelity. on it, it's a failure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> one terabyte is a lot games. of disk space. Yeah, you got three games that you're playing, right? And it's not. I don't even know. If, I think you're exaggerating that one, but still, um, it's not for a PC game. players. We have options, but I think yeah. because of this gen, it being such a focus now. Yeah. that regular gamers are going to have an issue where they're not going to be able to easily swap or want to mm. swap or add SSD cards onto their PS5, right? They're going to be like, what the fuck? Uh, I sit two hours uh, for a 200 gig download that I thought I bought on disc. I guess that's for nothing. They're going to discover all these tricks that we've been pulling over their eyes <laughs> and they're gonna it's gonna hit them all at once and i think uh it's, people are already think, upset there was, there i think was it's like already some, been i think it's already been a problem on ps3 and xbox for a while one. yeah or, sorry not ps3 ps4 ps4 yeah. xbox one uh, ps4 pro yeah yeah ps4 pro not, especially yeah. not even pro like pro is one terabyte it was the the one before that the regular ps4 was people were annoyed right? with the install day one install yeah so like so like people are already in, annoyed with that, but like at the same time, if you want more fidelity, you want 4K, you want bigger textures, like you want PBR, like it's just going to get bigger. That's fine, man. That's why you got to put in the resources for the compression technology. All the shit that you talked about sounds yeah, like yeah, yeah. we need to throw more more programmers at that, yeah. right? Make you crash more. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think the thing is like there are compression techniques that people are, are using already and it's still you know like it, there's a lot of content a lot of data right mm -hmm. um, there's actually a good talk to by talking about spider-man and the work they did there to reduce their data sizes on this oh so, see i need to read that up um, oh, what was that on that was at gdc um is that on the remat oh the last one then right the first it, one. it was yeah it was it was the last it was yeah it was about the first the first uh spider-man um, it was a pretty good, it was about all of their tech, but a part of the talk talked about the, the, the storage, the, the file sizes on disk. Yeah. It's becoming yeah. I mean, a big yeah. problem, man. I'm going to look that up and I'll, I'll link it to you guys if I can find it. Oh, PS five only has, let me look this up right now. One 800, second. 800 gigabytes. No, not even less than that for, for gameplay. Well, the, yeah. the disc the disc is 800 gigabytes and then and then the, like like a couple hundred of it goes away for the system or something like that yeah let me uh switch it up here so you guys can see it yeah all right now that I that, 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 that i think is that i think is kind of crazy but i understand why that's a lot man so explain, uh, explain to the uh, lay people. I understand, of course, right? Uh, oh, oh, oh you, well, you explain to the people. Like, <laughs> but uh, I, I don't want to. <laughs> this is your 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 field, sir, professor. You have the floor. Uh, why exactly are there only about three hundred and fifty gigs of? Where does that it's, get a it's lot six, to? It, it's six hundred and sixty-seven gigabytes. Yeah, but like that means three hundred fifty gigs if it's a one yeah. terabyte. Well, well, actually, eight twenty-five, right? So two hundred. Yeah, yeah. I have no okay. One, I have no idea where a hundred and some odd gigs is going. I have no idea, right? But I do know the reason why the disc. I, I'm supposing the reason why the disc is small is because it's a super fast SSD uh, that is faster than any SSD you can buy off the shelf currently. Um, and I have a pretty fast SSD in my PC and yeah. that joint and that joint is expensive. Mm -hmm. Right. And so like you want the, the price of the console to still be 500 bucks. Something oh, so, has to, something has to get. So you think it's a poor man SSD then? <laughs> That's, it's, I'm saying it's a really, really fast SSD, but, but you have to keep the cost down. Right. And so the size, the amount, the, the amount of memory or the, the storage that is on the SSD impacts the size it impacts the the cost right well i am seeing like the last 24 hours it has been a lot about storage space so gamers are yeah causing a murmur not an uproar yet but they are noticing like what the fuck 
<laughs> Spider Man Miles Morales, the ultimate launch edition, is 105 gigabytes. And Demon Souls is 66 gigabytes. And Black Ops Cold War is 133 gigabytes. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Those Blu ray discs can hold how much again? The the I latest think, one, I think. Yeah, I, I I can't remember, but it's it's a it's a lot, right? Um, I'll look that up right now. I mean, we're kind of dedicating this roundtable to this because I it is something. I feel it's gonna slow gamers down. People are like the biggest sale. The hook has been how fast. Uh, gains been able to load or not load at all, right? But in fact, yeah. But in fact, all the loading <laughs> is happening for installation. <laughs> That's the irony of that, and it's fucking one game at a time only. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, since I skipped last gen, I'm imagining it's the same sitting there and waiting, right? It's nothing special. 200 gigs of download is still 200 gigs of download, correct? The consoles aren't doing anything special to speed that up. No, yeah. If you have, yeah, it's like, no, yeah. Your download is, that's what you're downloading. Yeah. But the compression, that's what I'm saying. The compression of like what is actually stored on your, on your disc. Uh, that it helps you download speeds too because you're going to be downloading less, right? For the same amount of data if it had good compression. Um, but yeah, good luck. Good luck. I mean, your friends aren't aren't having some master formula. You don't think this will be? As far as I'm hearing things, it seems like this is par for the course for this gen. That's just the way it is. Deal with it. Sort yeah, of. I just think yeah, I just think games are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And and uh, I think one of the things that the console folks focused on was super fast SSDs and really removing uh, the loading times. That's expensive, and so in order to keep the cost down, they they're they're, they're skipping on the on the space. You know what I mean? Okay, uh, I kind of want to brush over uh, this topic. Um, mm. You're the Toronto office, right? So this is the Montreal mm-hmm. office. It sounds like it was a hoax, but the Ubi- Ubisoft office uh, reported a hostage potential scenario that turned out mm-hmm. to be just a bad phone call. Uh, you know, there were <laughs> people on the roofs, people recognizing on Twitter. If there was ever a reason to not go back in the office, uh, I think this well, helps. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say that if there's ever a reason why people are trash, this is a good <laughs> example of that. Right. Well, like, like I think, I think swatting an office for whatever reason. Yeah. Right. Is dumb. Yeah. Right. And not only is it dumb, it's also dangerous. Very dangerous. It get, and it could get people hurt. You know what I mean? Die. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, and there's people, there's people I know that work in that office too. Right. And mm-hmm. so like, it's, it's just, it's just really shitty for, for what, someone to do something like did that. Did you know anyone that were at the office at the time that had to? I'm sure, I'm sure there's some people I know that were at the office at the, at the same time, but I know some folks I do know were at home at the time because the office is not, wasn't at hundred percent capacity. Yeah. Um, but still like, like just doing that just seems like why, like find something better to do with your life. Right. Um, I always chalk this up to a department at the studio, uh, that had like a due date <laughs> that they wanted to avoid. <laughs> And they just called this in just to avoid uh, hitting that deadline. I mean, it might be a stretch. It might not be. But I feel like right. maybe in Canada, <laughs> game studios are that available for regular people to swap people for. I don't know. I, I just find I it mean, hard that regular I'm, citizens would do this. No, I mean, there's, I mean, there's a lot of recent news about ubisoft right one uh and then there's a lot of um their games a few of their games just came out watchdogs assassins and 
and assassins, right? Yeah, yeah. And it could easily be some disgruntled person just being mad because it's it's cool to be bad and 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 doing a, a SWAT attack on the office, right? Like that's 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 very plausible, right? Um, and whoever it was, it's it's just shameful, shameful behavior. <laughs> crazy that people can get away with that it seems actually i feel less great about our technology at this point i feel like that's something that we should be pretty good at nailing people on since I mean, everyone's I think, so monitored well i Did think they they well i don't you know think they they caught, i don't know if they're gonna if they caught them yet but i'm sure they will catch whoever it is they, they usually catch these people that do this stuff right i know Cool. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see uh, if there's any update. <laughs> it's very watchdogish. If there was ever a PA, PR, PR stunt, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah. I mean, this month. Yeah. I mean, last this, this recent news of uh, in the last month have been pretty calm uh, given the uh sellout of the consoles and it finally launching very surprised it by it still uh but you know logically thinking that people st still had money to spend uh and was going to spend on it anyways um i i do want to comment a bit from our last round table uh it was a uh, pretty I think it was a split decision. I think, I think a lot of <laughs> listeners call well, didn't call in, but messaged and commented saying, um, they see some, the strengths of both sets. No, I saw some comments saying that we both didn't know what the hell we were talking about. So uh, yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's, yeah, I didn't see that. <laughs> I only saw maybe one person said that. <laughs> the thing, the funny thing that was opposing me was the same argument that I felt a gamer would say that don't understand game dev uh, and, or how entertainment licensing works. Um, I didn't see anything that really made me pause for rethinking my stance. And that's probably because I'm stubborn. But, <laughs> but I really still just want to end this episode with at least replying to some of those. Um, Mm. There was a lot of comment that were uh, using my example, saying like, um, you know, how I use Nikes as like a, a comparison, right? And people was like, well, you don't play with Nike shoes, you know? <laughs> and I just don't, I just want to reiterate. Yeah. For me, when I play games, especially Final Fantasy, right? Let's still find Metal Gear Solid, especially, right? To me, that the experience of playing the game is as much as watching the game and kind of going through that linear experience and and unraveling the story, right? And I think that those type of games uh, can't be discounted. Um, and streaming have clearly shown that it destroys that element of surprise of playing the game because if one of your incentives to find out the story especially final fantasy the old final fantasy uh, kind of walk you down my memory lane so if it's old for me it's super old for you right uh <laughs> <laughs> where final fantasy 7 i remember playing through the games which were fun on its own but the graphics weren't there a lot of those games the graphics weren't that impressive to kind of keep you going but it wasn't until the cutscene where i was like super excited and uh, that would kind of bridge the gap for me for getting through the gameplay to watch the cutscene to watch the story progress right um, I just feel that streaming destroys that. Uh, simple as that. And people who say it's not interactive, therefore it's okay. I, I don't think that's true. I think uh, what makes games super cool is that it combines movie going experience. It combines the enjoyment of music. It combines storytelling it, and it adds interactivity on top. Of it. It's all of that. And so I, I don't think you can discount any part of that uh, because all of that makes a game. Uh, not just the interactive part. And so that's that's my answer to that. So if you want to reply to any of your hater comments, <laughs> you go for it. But I think I, I hate on you enough 
where you don't need to. <laughs> you reply to pretty much whatever I said. So hey, you, already, you already know, man. I don't care what people be saying. All <laughs> that, so. I don't care either. Actually, I kind of revel in the yeah. attention of hate. I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> You know, maybe it's one of my, <laughs> one of the things I got to work through therapy, but I actually like people challenging and debating thoughts that don't match their own. I, I, I yeah, like discussions. Sure. So, yeah. um, I think that's one of the, those, those that topic, especially, um, uh, apart from the hard drive storage mm -hmm. topic, that's been kind of in like in for, smaller circles and forums debating the streaming thing has been pretty controversial because I, I've seen that type of discussion everywhere. Um, not covered enough, but I do see these circles kind of defending both sides, which leads to me that we do need to have a bigger, serious conversation where um, we're not so divided on this. And I'm, I'm talking for both the gamers and game developers. If there's enough people arguing for both sides, there's it's obviously a system that's not working for all. Yeah, I mean, we we talked about this before, right? We said like, you know, if game developers don't like it, they can do D, um, DMCA takedown notices. They they actually can do that. Yeah. And the ones that do support the streamers, and they are, and it's it's becoming a whole thing. Yeah. And I don't know if there's really anything to do beyond that, right? If you don't want people to stream your game, tell them please don't stream my game and most people won't and then if they still do do dmca and and keep it pushing was there a popular game that did that recently because i am looking for someone like that to t come on the show and talk Me. about the experience yeah I you've done that before you, no 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 i was saying <laughs> I, don't, I don't i don't know if you can um the one the one company that i know that did that a lot was nintendo right <sighs> Nintendo's tough. Those guys. <laughs> <Right. laughs> it would be hard to get on. So there's no other besides Nintendo I, that you can think I of? I can't remember. I, I do know that there was some. There might have been some people that said, hey, our game's a narrative game. You could only yeah. stream the first hour. But, like, I mean, you could do a Google search and try to find who, who those folks are. Man, it might be worth getting Gainer back on. I use his game so much as, like, a uh, <laughs> example of why streaming is bad. I yeah. wonder what his thoughts on it is. It yeah. might be too unpopular. That's the taboo thing that's happening. It's too unpopular to oppose streaming and say that. Um, I mean, so now a lot of game developers are outspoken about what they feel about it, which is yeah. where, I, where I come in, right? I'll be that for you. <laughs> but it is dangerous, right? It's kind of crazy the backlash that people get for... It's kind of like the... Uh, this is funny, right? So recently someone... We have a lot of new listeners that haven't caught up yet uh, that listen from episode one. <laughs> and so they're getting to the point when we had the uh, the the maker of Adrift on. Um, mm. uh, his name slipped my name. Sorry, dude. Uh, but he happened to be the guy who, uh, who worked at Microsoft and um, had that whole controversy saying that it's always connected and stuff and got fired over it, right? Oh, yeah. You know, he, yeah, he yeah. went on. So we interviewed him a few years back, not knowing that backstory. And uh, if he's still listening, you know, uh, finally the truth comes out. It's like, we didn't know. And so we did an interview without mentioning it. And he actually commended both Larry and I saying that, hey, man, it's super cool that you didn't bring that up. And I was like, yeah, of course, man. And then I immediately had to Google after what the hell he's talking about to realize, <laughs> holy shit, this is the guy uh, who just recently went through this horrible experience uh, where the whole company turned their back on him and shit. But yeah. I feel like the equivalent of that. Adam, Adam Orth. Yeah, Adam Orth. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Uh, I'll link that episode on this link notes. It's one of the earlier episodes. But I feel that that controversy is sort of equaling to this one where game devs are kind of forced to agree and it's kind of bad to not um for possible backlash it's 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 it feels like the the like until we actually talked about it uh last month i didn't realize how how 
how bad it was uh, for me to say the things that I was saying. <laughs> Didn't know. Uh, I thought it was very uh, sensible and reasonable even. Uh, and people sort of agreed, but uh, others didn't. Uh, had no idea that it was such a thing. Um, that even shows that that industry is so much stronger than the game development industry right now, uh, where, where they had that many people fighting for it. Um, I mean, is there a point I'll, I'll leave it with this, right? Is there a, a line that you feel that we will be, uh, what do you call it? Is it exposed exposure, not exposure, taken advantage of where game developer is really left in the dust? Like how much bigger does that, that part of the industry have to be where you feel like, all right, now this is becoming a problem or is there never a scenario like that for you? Yeah. Like I said before, I think it's a symbiotic relationship. Is it? You know, so like we make games, people are going to want to stream them. We got to learn to work together. So if a streamer yeah. makes more money than you, they already are, man. <laughs> <laughs> already Streaming are. your game exclusively. They already are. You no sales. What that them. tells, what that tells me, what that tells me is that the, the people making the game need to, need to need to know better business skills. How to how to stream and get get a get a piece of that pie. Yeah. It's true. Uh, I still, I still stand by, but, uh, I'm learning, I'm open to, to, to be educated. Um, but, uh, for, for those listening, man, I am looking for that one recent company that did order DMC takedowns and went through that whole process. I am looking for that person to kind of talk about that side of the story, because I think, I think it is important to kind of investigate and, and listen to more for, for the repercussions of that. Uh, I think that's very interesting. But uh, thank you, Ray, as always, for coming on. Uh, I know last time I said that might be the last round table. This is the last round table. Um, right. uh, I'll probably won't talk to you till the beginning of next year. Uh, I did mention many times that uh, I might be taking a break, but I do have some episodes that I have <laughs> booked already that I'm going to do. And it might be the only thing I do over December is talking to people. I don't mind it. It's, yeah. it's fun for me. So um, thank you all and uh, have a good Thanksgiving. This is Thanksgiving week. Uh, sorry for those who can't. Well, when this episode is out, uh, people okay. will be preparing to all be right. lonely again. Uh, eating their turkey. Uh, but be safe for those living in the United States. I guess worldwide, it's actually pretty bad right now. Uh, just hold out a little longer, I think. The vaccine is almost here. It takes about six months, really, maybe in spring when all of us can get it. Mm -hmm. But even then, it'll probably be till summer when everyone actually takes it. We do have anti anti-vaccinators out there <laughs> who haven't even taken the flu vaccine. And to be honest, I'm not actually anti-vaccinator. I've never really been a routine flu uh, vaccinator every year. I've just never yeah. gotten sick. I never really had a problem fighting off the sickness on my own. Mm -hmm. uh, but even with this uh, COVID thing, I'm going to take no chances and yeah, handle that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And I hope you guys uh, consider the same uh, to make our world normal again. Yeah. Cool. Ray, thank you for discussing these topics and uh, enjoy. Uh, Show. The riches. <laughs> Have fun, man. Thanks for having me on.